All right, so we're moving on in class nine to section 3.7, where we're gonna talk about internal energy. U, a thermodynamic property. That sounds like, ooh, I have a, sub a subtitle here, exciting. So let's take a look at this, see what happens. Um, so heat and work are forms of energy transfer, but internal energy of a closed system is something that we can try to, to, to measure, right? It's kind of like, here is a state. It's a state property where we, if we know enough information about, if we're usually, for instance, we could be given the temperature and the pressure. And if we know that, oh, it's superheated, we could look it up in the steam tables and find out what the internal energy is, right? As opposed to, um, we can't do that with heat and work because those are things that are going from, that's the transfer, right, of energy. So this is a, a, a you know, the first law uh, equation that we uh, have been using. And now we're going to implement this internal energy because we, we're going to get some definitions of what it is. And it's the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of the particles of the system, right? So we're talking on the micro scale, it, itty bitty little micro things, right? So this is, uh, uh, and it's closely related to temperature. I should mention that out. Because, you know, if you try, want to try to think about, you know, on the molecular level, what does it mean, like the temperature, or even with the pressure, it's really talking about the bouncy-bouncy of all these little molecules. And when they're just uh, hanging out, uh, we don't have a very high amount of internal energy. But when they start freaking out and going all, all over the place, then we have internal energy uh, for, within a, this, like, little closed system. And I took that figure from this place right here for some reason. I think it was at Purdue, so that's a good school. I like it. Uh, internal energy is a state property. I just said that. But it's determined, in many cases, from tables um, if other state properties are known. All right? So uh, it is based on the comparison of an arbitrary reference state. So that's a, that's, that's a new piece of information that you might not have known. That we, when, when we create those tables, uh, we just pick some arbitrary reference and then sort of like measure as a, as a, a comparison of that. So we use lowercase u when we have internal energy per mass. So that makes it a, I'm trying to remember, is that intensive or extensive? I don't really care. But it, one of those two things. It means the one that you, where you, if you cut the thing in half, you, you, you don't change the, the value of it because it's on a per mass basis. As opposed to capital U, which is the other one. Boy, I should really know that. But I'm going to pause and like look it up because I feel dumb. All right, so just as a reminder, from the first day of class and the first page, um, intensive is independent of mass, where there is extensive property, it, it, where, where if you cut it in half, you get half the stuff, right? So the lowercase use is, I just, my mind just went blank, is an intensive property, which is a good thing. We like to do a lot of work on an intensive basis or with intensive properties. So we don't need to know what the mass was. And then we can, what we could do is we could multiply it by mass flow later on, uh, uh, which is really, a, uh, that's, that's a convenience. Um, so here we go. Uh, so there's the E, lowercase e, dividing a, a capital E by M. And so here's your internal energy right there. And it's lowercase. Um, recall from this that there's this micro scale, like, okay, so what, what is, what is the little u bro broken up? But let's do it into mo uh, external, I'm trying to think what external molecules mean, uh, but we have the translation and we have the internal molecules, whatever they mean, whatever. We're talking about chemistries, things that are going on inside on the molecular basis. Internal energy for water and steam can be looked up in the steam tables, right? So we could go to this. Right, so the thing, when we're looking up U, we can go to internal energy and we could find, and just like specific volume, we could have two different uh, um, uh, internal energies on the vapor dome, right? So we have a vapor dome like this right here and, you know, at a particular temperature uh, or and pressure, we have the UF. I can't draw it. U F. That's supposed to be a U, and I'm drawing with a mouse. It's not easy. U 
G right there. And for our convenience, because we know there's going to be a quality in between these, you know, our point may be somewhere in there, we uh, multiply that quality uh, just like we did before. All right, so, we, we, so when we have wet steam, which is to say that it's not superheated steam and it's underneath the vapor dome, this is how we find the internal energy. So there was only five minutes worth of stuff there. Is that worth um, making a new video over? Uh, sure. I think so. Yeah, this, this uh, example is long. Okay. So that was introduction to internal energy. Kind of a short video. Feel feel let down, do you? A little bit.